All right. So let's start the conversation on real leadership roadmap with John Addison. And I'll just kind of give you guys a little bit of backstory on John Addison. So John Addison was the CEO for a number of years of a company called Primerica, which is a financial services company. And actually, I think it was seven years ago, Mark had him speak at conference to us. Uh, it was it was awesome. I mean, as you can tell from just this first module, how important leadership is to him. So when he spoke at conference, you know, it, it broadened a lot of our perspective on, on just leadership as a whole. So again, the things that he's saying, he's done on a large scale. So Tay, with that, what kind of things did you take down today? Oh man, it was uh, so good. I think in between me trying to keep up with the notes because there's so many gold niggas and trying to keep Aubrey kind of happy it was a hassle, but it was still good because I think that just comes with understanding like uh, and preparation. We've talked about preparation before, knowing what's going to come and actually preparing for those moments. So uh, it was a couple of things that really stuck out. I, I, the first thing that I really love and is we've talked about this numerous times about leadership is uh, the first step in leadership is leading yourself. Uh, and one of my things that I've had to uh, just one of the quotes that I just kind of pulled and just kind of reminded myself uh, whenever I feel like I'm going into a slump or whenever I feel like I don't doing something is uh, reminding myself it's like I'm my longest commitment. If I'm not taking time to pour into my cup, then I don't have time and I won't be able to effectively uh, pour into other people's cups. So I have to take care of myself. I have to make sure that I'm doing my leadership development for myself so that I can lead my family, lead our team, lead the people uh, who God has uh, placed upon us. And I love, I just love the three things uh, that he talked about. The first, uh, decide who you are uh, and what makes you unique. And I think that just, uh, for me, that goes back to like one of my definitions that I've kind of uh, pulled along with um, for uh, what personal development is. And it is you personally taking responsibility, uh, deciding that you are like, you're worth the time investing in. So like you have to take time to invest in yourself. Nobody's going to do it for you. So I love when he used the term, he said, you have to mind that you have to mind deep within yourself to find those unique things about yourself so that you can like really focus and build on those things as well. Uh, and then the second thing he said, build on your strengths. And that comes after you find, after you've taken the time to do that, then you get to build on that. Then you get to show up to these courses. You get to learn and really dig and just kind of uh, uh, mold yourself into the person who you want to be and then develop a piece of core. Those are the, the main things that he talked about throughout the course, but that really kind of uh, stuck out. I love the, uh, the second page that he went to. Uh, this has been one of my favorites because I've been having this conversation with my wife and I've been trying to wrap my mind around this whole deal. Um, and he said, there is only one you, you're unique. Then he says, you're in charge of your life. Uh, and I love this because I was listening to this one older preacher on YouTube, uh, and he said, um, you're, you're not in control of your life, but you're in charge of a life. God is in control. And he talked about when you try to control things, that's a sign of some insecurities that you're facing because you always want to be in control of things. But he said, when you're in charge, that's confidence, that's knowing, that's having a plan, that's taking action. That's doing the things that you need to do to stir your life. We have to understand, like uh, Chad always talks about, you can go, uh, you can go with the floor, you can go against the floor, and I think going against the floor is you taking taking leadership, you taking the steering wheel, and actually leading your life to uh, where it wants to go. Uh, and then I love when he talks about be true to who you are. I think we get in spaces where we try to uh, conform ourselves to uh, what the crowd is or what the people is, but I think that what that what makes you stand out. If you want to be different, then you have to live a different life. And many times in order to live that different life, you have to be uniquely yourself. You have to bring something to the table that is not at the table. So you can't conform yourself to who other people want you to be. You have to live yourself so that you can pull out the gold within others so that you can speak life in the, into others so you can show them that it's okay to be comfortable with, you, with who you are because we all have different gifts and talents. Like even looking at the Zoom, even when we share our notes, like we share so differently, but together, collectively, we bring so much more to the group because we come as who we are and we share as who we are. So I think for me, that's a perfect uh, example of what, what that looks like. And then just uh, last thing that I want to talk about when he talked about, and it's just life. Uh, and I love life because life does not uh, show any favoritism. 
uh, it's going to hit me the same way it's going to hit Chad, the same way it's going to hit Joe. Like, it's going to hit all of us, and it don't care who you are. And I love the, uh, the quote that he, he's, he, he, he kind of said, and I've heard it multiple times. He said, you, you're either in a storm, you're coming out of one, or you're getting ready to go into one. Uh, and I love that because it, it kind of... Uh, kind of keep things in perspective that you're not uh, untouchable. Like you're gonna go through things as well in your marriage, raising your kids, in life, in your business. You're gonna go through seasons of the business. You may not believe it, but you're gonna go through that. And that's just part of life's testing you and allow you to build and show the strengths that you have. Uh, so one of the, the, uh, the things that I love when he say, he said, you have to find a place and a way to have peace. Uh, and I love that because that takes you being intentional. Uh, that takes you actually taking, going on offense and looking for ways to uh, maneuver the things that's going to happen to your life. And the last thing that I share with you guys, uh, and I pulled this, and I, like, I, I get quotes and I just read books and I grab the things from the books that I can actually use to implement in my life. The one thing that I've come to learn, like everything in every book is not for me, but there is gold nuggets in every book that is specifically for me. So it's my job to mine out that gold, mine out these nuggets, so I can apply it to my life and out of that share with other people how I kind of use this uh, to change my, change my life. And uh, one of the things that I really just took and hold of, and it was uh, this, it said difficult, difficult times can do three things for you. It will define you, it can diminish you, or it can develop you. So for me, I want difficult times to develop me. I want to know what's in me that I have not yet known. What do I need to like, what do I, under all of this dirt, under all of this life that's happening, what piece of gold nugget that's in my life that I can use to be of value to share with other people? So for me, it's always looking like being, a, like Joel said, eternal optimist. Like there's always, like they always say, it's a lesson in every blessing. Like you have to understand what you're going through it's something there for you to get out to go and share. But if you run from that, if you try to look at it, it's like, God, why is this happening to me? God is like, no, this is happening for you. There's so much in this that I want you to learn so that you can go share. There's so much in this season of your business that you need to learn so that when you do hit triple diamond, you're going to see blessings that you probably wouldn't have saw before. When you do hit ambassador diamond, you're going to be able to tell a story that other people will be able to relate to so you can bring me glory because you came, you came through this. So I think we have to shift our perspective and many times to understand like when life hits you, life is bringing you a gift. But you have to withstand that storm. You have to literally take cover, stand ground, stand firm on your, your core convictions, your values, your principles, and the thing that makes you who you are. And you have to use those. You have to understand, like, this is where real faith comes in. Faith is not me sitting in this office sharing with you guys all the good things that God has done for me. Faith was in those difficult times when, when God was testing me, when he was putting me in the fire and I have to withstand that so that I can come out of that on the other side and say, look what God has done in my life, in my marriage, with my kids. So you have to understand like these things that's happening to you probably right now in your life, this is your testimony. This is your story. I love listening to Joel and Stephanie. Every time they go back to standing in the food line, that was real faith. They had to withstand that. They didn't crumble and say, this is, this is the life that we've been given. They used that as a personal testimony. This is a gift from God. We're going to use this and we're going to, this incredible opportunity is going to come along at the end of this. And we're going to be able to share something that's going to reach for generations of generations and be able to build a legacy on top of that, that we probably wouldn't have saw if we were to look at this as God is punishing us. Why is this happening to us? No, God has given us a gift. And because of that, we have a story that's going to reach millions and millions of people across the world because we was able to withstand this storm and be able to come out on the other side to help other people come out on the other side as, as well. So uh, I love this. And I love just the fact that leadership is all about leading yourself. You can't lead other people. I love that he said, before I come and tell you guys something, I'm going to make sure I've already practiced it. And I think that's probably the main thing for me that I get from it. Like, I don't preach what I practice, I practice what I preach. So if I'm saying it, then I have to live it so that I can go out and really be uh, live a life of integrity and really be able to share from something I've, I've learned along the way. So uh, just so much good in this, man. I can't wait uh, to keep moving forward with the other modules that they have as well. So good. All right, I guess, I guess we're done here. <laughs> that was awesome, Tay. Uh, this, is, this is the one thing that I love is that he started out the conversation saying, Leadership is the scarcest resource in existence. And that is absolute truth. Guys, we need you to step up 
in your leadership capacity, in your leadership ability, in your ability to influence others for good so that we can make a difference across the world. Uh, the three leadership abilities that he talks about is one, the ability to lead people. You have to get good at that. Two is the ability to make an organization grow. So leadership is great, but you need to be able to grow it with more people. And then number three is your ability to influence people. So leadership is about having influence and having the ability to impact people, whether it's for good or for bad. Uh, Mark on the call for the leadership call, and again uh, on the Sunday night call, talked about the conversation that he had with the Michigan State football coach about how they had a leader on the team that wasn't living up to his responsibility. And when he went to him and asked him, you know, basically he was being negative, you know, complaining, not doing and putting in the work that he was supposed to. So when he went and asked him, uh, does he think he's a leader? And he said, yes, I am a leader. He goes, well, I don't want your leadership on my team. I would rather have 10 guys out on the field than to have 11 guys and them following your leadership. So make sure that you're looking at the correct leadership. Art, like, you know, Tay said that I said, that Chad says, is always being optimistic. Are they speaking life? Are you speaking life? Because that is a huge portion of leadership. Jesus spoke life everywhere he went. And that's why in what we would say is three years of his ministry, of his life actually doing what he came to do, he gathered so many followers. Not just that, but think about it. His leadership has gone on for over 2,000 years and has continued to develop followers. That's the kind of leadership we could all attain to have, one that goes on for generations after us. You are a strong person. I had that start. You know, most of us don't realize how strong we are uh, until we look back at, at what we've been through. That's why I said, you know, 2020 has been your best year because look at, you've made it this far with all of the stuff that's gone on. And here you are still going. There's only one you and you are unique and you are in charge of using that uniqueness to change others' lives. Make sure that you focus on building your strengths. Uh, talk about that when it comes to uh, becoming a power couple or having a strong marriage is sitting down with your spouse or your significant other and discussing what your strengths and weaknesses are. That way you're aware. And then you can focus on working on them in a specific way that maximizes it. So instead, find what you're good at and then maximize that, maximize your strengths. He says, don't focus on your weaknesses, but don't ignore them. You know, look at them and, and work at them as you can, but you should be spending most of your time maximizing your strengths. Also, I had this start because this was, a, this was a great statement and I don't know if anybody else caught it. Your job is not your life. It is your current means to create income. Your job is not what you were put here to do. It's what you're doing to create income so that you can find what you were put here to do. That, that was impactful. Develop a peaceful core. Uh, Tay said the same thing. Life is a storm. It's hard to win. And it's hard to succeed. That's why so many people give up. is because they don't come into it knowing that no matter what, life is going to be a storm. So now that we've created that as the foundation, that should give you the ability to get through life and to win and to become successful. Because if you understand that you're always going to get knocked down, I posted yesterday, I'm either getting knocked down or getting back up. So you, you can either give up or you can get back up. And the people that get back up the most are the ones that are the most successful. So if you know that you're constantly going to be getting knocked down, it's even biblical. It said it in the Bible, get knocked down seven, get back up eight. You know, that one extra get up is what 
difference differentiates you from the masses. I love this. And, oh, my wife is amazing. She tells me to do this all the time. Smile. Hold a smile for 30 seconds. She tells me to do it all the time because when you do that, it chemically changes your brain. It is a physical act of smiling releases chemicals in your brain that cause happiness. So when he says, act the way you want to feel and soon you will feel the way you want to act, it is scientific that if you fake your smile, it will create true joy to your brain. Guys, that's powerful. If all you do is give people smiles, it's amazing the difference in your life. I go around, and me and Steph talk about this all the time, be the person in your neighborhood who waves. When you're driving and people are walking, wave at them. When you're walking and people are driving, wave at them. Be that person in your neighborhood. Because 90% of the people never wave back, which never makes any sense to me, but hey, whatever. You're the one that's waving. Be the waver, be the smiler, be the person that creates joy for other people. Okay, decide who you are, build on your strengths, develop a peaceful core. And I'll finish it with saying, go live the story you want to write. I thought that was an amazing way to end this. Guys, go out and make it an amazing day. We'll see you again here next time.